People struggle with electrical engineering is because their basic concepts are not strong enough. Their fundamentals are not solid. So in this video, I want to go about the very, very basic and very basic concepts of electricity, which is V equals to IR. And in the field of engineering, there are a few, few main branches such as civil engineering, mechanical engineering, and electrical engineering. Civil is where you sometimes is where you look at things that do not move. Basically, they deal with things that do not move. Structures, buildings, bridges, whatever. Mechanical deals with things that moves. And motor, anything that moves, change, belt, those kind of things that move. Electrical, they deal with things that don't seem to move. But actually moves. That's why you look at currents and zap zap stuff, yeah, those kind of stuff. Okay, if you want to be rich, there you go. If you want to have a nice, satisfying career, there you go. If you want to enroll in some torture and you suffer brain damage, there you go, yeah. Okay, people do not get electricity because it's quite abstract in the beginning and if you're not good in the beginning, then you have some troubles uh, afterwards. So I want to start out with the most basic thing, because V equals IR. You have a voltage, which is what you call a potential difference. Potential difference. I'll explain this in a, in a minute. Um, in Basically, it means that I like to describe electricity in terms of water, because is something that we see and we can hold and we can touch a bit. Okay, you have a bucket of water at this height. And you have a bucket of water at this height. So, I would say that the potential difference between the two buckets are H minus H prime. Yeah, I should use a different color thing. Yep, that is the that is the potential difference. If they have a wider gap, which means water can flow down more aggressively. If their gap is very small, then the water flows down very less aggressively. It doesn't flow down like too too fast at all. That is how I would picture voltage, like as an uh, to make it less abstract. Because once you understand this, you're able to freely apply and manipulate your understanding, get a very and concepts are come to you very a lot more easier, and it makes engineering very intuitive instead of just memorizing stuff. That is voltage. I want to look at. Next, I'm going to look at um, resistance. Resistance is how I would describe as um, the pipe. Let's say if you have a two bucket of water, different height, so there's a potential difference, potential difference, and this height, and there's a pipe. For a current to flow, for water to flow, first, you must have a potential difference, which means the water, you must have a height difference between the two things. Two, you must have a connection, in this case, the pipe. And sometimes the pipe, there are, there are lots of pipes. Some pipes are thicker, some pipes are thinner. The smaller pipe would have, we say, more resist because it limits the amount of water flowing. It limits the amount of current that can flow through. While the larger pipe, you can say that uh, it has larger pipe, it has lesser resistance because more water can flow through and more, and more current can flow through. So which brings us to our next part, which is current. For current to flow, for current to flow, you need two things, which is these two things. I'll put it into electrical terms now, which is voltage, the difference of height, the potential difference, and two, connection, which is a conductor in a sense. 
In wires or a piece of metal, it's a good conductor. Air is a very bad conductor. It's what you call an insulator. It prevents things from flowing. So I want to move into the next part. Let me bring this up here again. Okay. To increase your current, or let's say... Okay, we go into a common problem. You have a voltage source, and you have two and you have two loads, R1 and R2. So current must travel in loop. Electricity must travel in a loop. And you may say that, okay, how do I determine the amount of current? This is how I make this is how you're gonna make things intuitive. Your intuition is gonna come in here now. Okay, let's say R1 has a very large resistance, let's say 10 ohms. And R2 has very little resistance, only 2 ohms. 10 ohms means that it is highly resistive. Highly resistive, it will really lead to limiting. Because you want to resist the amount of current that can flow through, it limits. This one, less resistive. And no, no space. And then it limits less. It's not as limiting. Intui intuitively, the larger resistance would have a smaller current because it does not want to resist anything. And the smaller resistance would have a larger current because they, sh they share the same voltage, everything is equal. But the current that passes through is different. How would you imagine this is that um, this one, the larger resistance have a small pipe, which means very limited amount of water can flow through. But the lo lower resistance has a very large pipe with very little resistance inside and a lot of water can just flow through. Uh, it's like um, you look into a road, a, lo a road with four or five lanes, which means it's very wide. It can accommodate a lot of cars. And cars basically is a current in this case. And road is your resistance, resistor or, or connector. It connects things. So a larger road, which means more car can go in. Larger road means there are lesser resistance. You can just squeeze past and there's a lot of space to move around. So when the road is when the road is big, you can just fit a lot more cars. In the same case, when the road is big, that means the pipe is big, you can fit in a lot more current and current is like to push and push through. So imagine you're driving a car and you come up to a junction. This junction, you have two options. Option one, you go into a very tight, narrow road. Option two, you go into a larger road. By instinct, more cars will go into the larger road because it can fit. While there are still some cars that go into the narrow road because not everybody's going to go into a large road, they can end up in the same destination. They end up in the same destination, but more cars will choose this path. And that's why they, and that's how the intuition kicks in. Okay, um, I also want to address some little myth, which is like, okay, how much voltage kills people? How much voltage is needed to kill? Electricity kills in two ways. Electricity kills in two ways. One, basically it fries you. The current just passes through your body, hits your body, goes to the ground, gets discharged, and basically this part of you, every, wherever the current passes you, they all just heat up and gets, get fried, and then you're basically cooked. Skin is dead, your meat is cooked, and then you rot away. And that's how you die. You die a painful death in the hospital. The second way is that you die of um, a shock. 
This one isn't it doesn't take much to kill you, actually work quite little. I think around 20 mAh or something like that. It hits your heart, it targets your it affects your heart because your heart actually receives an electrical signal. And from there, um, it disrupts your heart's internal rhythm. Your heart beats out of order, it beats slow, it beats fast or whatever, and essentially you die of a heart attack. So this one it takes of a very low current. Low current is needed only. But well, this one is actually more of a high current. So back to the picture. How much voltage is needed to kill? The truth is, voltage plays no difference at all. What matters is the current. Voltage is the potential difference. So from one point to one point. The larger the difference, and the closer the gap together, the easier it is for the current to jump. So let's say you have two points, this here, and your voltage is, let's say, very small. So the, the, there's no, there's hard to jump because there's high resistance and then there's not enough voltage to push the, push the water to from point A to point B. But if your voltage is big, big voltage, big voltage, and the distance is the same, the current just bam, jump over, and this is the one that jumps over. The voltage just determines the electrical field. If the electrical field meets a proper conductor, then you jump over. It's like you traveling from your house to work. You need to get to work, but you need a path. So the path is here, and the path is so and there's another lot of path or whatever, and then you basically just choose the easiest path, which is lesser resistance. But let's say at night or whatever, you do not you do not need to get to work. That means there is no there is no need to go to work. There's no force to to go to work. But in the morning, when you need to go to work, there's a high voltage or high forcing or high forces that want to push you to work, and that's why you oh, you rush to work very fast, Zoom, like that. So yeah, the voltage determines if the current is able to jump from point A to point B, from point A to point B. But what kills you is actually the current itself. Is it a large enough current to kill you? And yeah, that's all.